Finally, it rises. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Attic, back with an update on this 63 Lincoln Continental. I was out at SEMA 2023 and enjoying some of the other festivities, so I'm kind of back in the catbird seat, so to speak. Now, this 63, I went back and watched the end of my video where I did the deep dive review, and my thought process was if this 65, as nice as it was, had hit 56,000, almost 57, my thought was that this one wasn't going to you know, hit that number, and what we ended up seeing is it ended at 38,500. I think overall, someone got a good solid, for the most part, car for the value. If you want to hear more about some of the things I pointed out, I'll link to the video at the end for the deeper dive if you're new to the channel. Uh, I wanted to give kudos to the seller uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, anytime these sellers are active and answering questions, that's a win uh, for the seller. In addition, I think bring a trailer, uh, you know, handles this side of it. Um, but basically, in the conversation, the seller was actively updating and, and you know, posting photos that um, pertain to the questions. And basically, what that ends up with is uh, bring a trailer, I believe, then goes and adds those to the listing. So some of these, if I remember correctly, weren't. Um, in the original batch of photos, at least the last couple here. Uh, and I may have missed a few when I did my review, but um, basically what you have here is him kind of showing the 61 through 63 transmission uh, for the seat. And he shows, uh, you know, a photo under the seat. I think someone may have asked about that or whatnot. Um, th there's guys out there that either sell these like the old car clearance uh, eBay store. Um, there's guys that rebuild them and things like that. So like if the seat's not working, typically it's the old grease inside those transmissions that have to be, you know, redone. There's videos out there on YouTube from Nathan Wilson and others on how to do that. It's kind of a pain. I'm not one to, um, do that type of work. So, uh, it's, it's really not up my alley, but certainly to be able to get the part and fix the seat, if that's, if that was a challenge. Um, this is showing the antenna here. Uh, someone may have asked about that. This is showing some of the bright work. Now, when I first saw this, it didn't. It just didn't click in my head, and I wanted to just explain this. At first glance, looking in the engine bay, you might think like, okay, what the heck's going on here? However, this is an old trick where you basically tie or solder or loop a wire around the hood latch release. And this goes into the fender or somewhere underneath the car in the event that, uh, let's say, the cable broke when you were trying to pop the hood. And if that cable breaks and you can't open the hood, you could be into a world of challenges, right? Especially if the battery is dead uh, or if you need to get inside the hood at all. Uh, of course, you can't. So this has been a backup method that folks have used for a long time. I've never really talked about it. Maybe I'll do a video in the future, but you can attach a wire here and again, loop it down kind of to a hidden spot. And um, in the event that you ever had to crawl under the car and pull on this a wire in this case, what it will do is pull this back and then release the hood. So it's a great kind of safety. Unfortunately, uh, Lincoln Motor Company, they never thought, you know, obviously they, they, they over engineered their cars. They probably didn't think, Hey, 60 years down the road, people would still uh, be driving them and enjoying them. So certainly that's what that was. So I wanted to explain that uh, this is showing the radiator out. There's probably some questions in there about it. This was showing uh, the gas tank in the back here, showing the 14 inch uh, wheel covers, if you will, kind of showing the paint underneath. That looks really nice, the paint. Um, and then this was, I think, the last photo just kind of showing it was cruising. Now, in addition to just a few things I wanted to mention here, in yellow, uh, this is the seller. So they designate that person. He And he said, with a few hours left to go, I think we can all agree that a 63 Lincoln Continental convertible is not a need but a want for many of us reading this. So here's your chance. I don't need to sell the car, but I would like to sell the car. 
this has led to my decision to lower the reserve. So it's certainly good to know that these sellers can actively work back with bring a trailer to lower or adjust, if you will, the reserve. He goes on to say, if the reserve is met, he refers to the car as Betty. Of course, we'll have a new home. I certainly believe someone's getting a great car for a great price, no matter the outcome. I want to thank everyone for your continued interest. So a real good comment there. And at that point, if you look at it, it was basically at twenty two grand, and that was on November 1st. If we scroll up, we see that it ended on November 1st at 245 and he was actively in there that morning. So probably the thought process was like, wow, it's the final day. I do want this car to move. He mentally wanted to move on from it, and he was kind of just sending that out to let everybody know, hey um, – go ahead and uh, bid because this car more than likely is going to sell. And there were, there, there was, and you can see here the photos. Um, there were a lot of good questions in here. And he uh, talks about here, the next to last picture shows the hood release cable we used uh, in place of a broken original. It is soldered to itself, but easily removable things, things like that. So like I've said, uh, even if a car like this, if you watch my video, Certainly, I may not catch everything, but you know when you're putting your money out there to buy something that you want, you certainly want to f ask the right questions. If nothing else, that's what my channel is really there to say, hey, look for these certain things on these unibody cars. And oh, by the way, you know, ask the questions that are going to make you feel confident with spending you know, the money that you've earned. Um, or that you're getting a loan for, so to speak, uh, to purchase uh, a car like this, right? That's 60 years old. But with that being said, 38.5, it's hard to say. I think some people have commented if, you know, is, is the market cooling off for these cars? I do believe with some of the higher prices that we've seen at auction, it makes someone think, hey, I'm going to go ahead and list my car. Uh, I want to let it go, right? I'm going to cash in. I'm going to liquidate this to go do something different. And certainly that is not a bad choice. The thing that I would always tell people, some of my friends or acquaintances or people that are friends with friends, they'll tend to ask, hey, I want to go ahead and sell my car. What do you think it's worth? It is very hard to say. I mean, granted, we can kind of get down to the nitty gritty and, and, and come to a, hey, probably this to this. But it's very hard to say because you'll see Really nice cars go for a lower amount than expected, and sometimes you'll see a car that's not as nice go for way more than expected. And the uh, recent example that I'll give you is if I type in here Lincoln. Now, typically I'll type Lincoln Continental, but if we scroll down here and we take a look at the 66, this 66 that I won't go into, uh, there was a, a deep dive review. Now, it technically, it didn't, it didn't hit the reserve, but it was 37,450. Okay, this, this is the one that had the reinforcements welded underneath it, right? So it goes for, let's call it 37,5. And then you have this car, which in my opinion, this car was way more solid. It went for 38,5. Now, I grant, you know, granted, the one did not sell. I totally get that. But this one being an earlier year, kind of a little bit more sought after at this point. So it's interesting to see that someone would, would have been willing to pay, you know, 38 grand, if you will, for a car that wasn't super nice. And, you know, underneath it, it wasn't, okay, in my opinion. Uh, and then you have a car like this that obviously had a little bit of uh, challenges here and there. Um, I think the, the biggest the biggest one to me was in the rear quarter right here. Uh, obviously, a, a good paint and body person could easily fix that. But with this car, it you know it it went for thirty eight five. You know, so it's it's just really hard. Uh, sometimes you'll see these cars go to auction, and I think the owners do believe they'll get more. I sometimes think they will, and then they don't. So it's really a crapshoot, so to speak. With that being said, thank you for all the support. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I am ODB, the Lincoln Addict. Don't forget to check out Lincoln Addict Podcast. 
However, you may find podcasts pretty much on any channel. Take care, everyone.